I spent the day modding Pokemon Sword and Shield. Hey guys, it's C with HD here, and welcome back to Codebreakers. We have a big list of mods for these Pokemon games, most of them being of high quality, and a bunch of quality of life improvements. Gonna be a fun one, so let's jump right in. After so many years with the regular Butterfree model, I can't lie, I've grown a little tired of it. So, let's give them a makeover. Beautiful. This mod replaces Butterfree with Big Smoke Free. If you're familiar with the GTA series, you probably know Big Smoke, or at least his fast food order. I'll have two number nine. But regardless, Butterfree is now a part of him. Or he is now a part of Butterfree, I'm not really sure. Now, when you head out of Postwick, you'll have his grace shine over you. Hey, uh, everyone. I'm sad to announce that uh, all the Reggies have tripped and fell into one of those little snowball maker toys and are permanently damaged. Now they look like this. <laughs> This mod replaces the execute model with all the little eggs of all the Reggie forms. Reggie Steel, Reggie Gigas, and even the new Crown Tundra ones. They're all here, and they're all eggs. It looks hilarious watching them all hop around, but unfortunately this doesn't mean it adopts some mega type form or something. It's still just grass psychic, but this model was too good not to include. Moving over to a classic mod of any Pokemon game, a randomizer. If you're unfamiliar with them, all the world encounters and Pokemon locations are completely randomized, including legendaries and other Pokemon you normally couldn't find out in the wild. This also means trainer Pokemon are random, so it feels like a whole different game. Just to show you what I mean, take a look at these routes. In the Galar Mines number 2, those sun disks that are normally scattered throughout the ground have become Zerud, so they're just bolted to the ground unless you get close enough to battle them. You can also just see all the random Pokemon that popped up in here while running around. Just outside, I was greeted to Melmetal, and a trainer who was strapped with a Volcarona. If all these still didn't impress you though, Route 1 had Zykeon. You know, the legendary of the game. The possibilities really are endless with this one. You can create dream teams that weren't even possible before. You also may have noticed that this is titled an extreme randomizer, which means that all the trainers are smarter and higher leveled. The levels they have are scaled by a 1.24 multiplier, so they will all be slightly higher level than what you're used to. On top of that, they aren't as dumb as they used to be, so they'll actually hit you hard, and pick the best possible option in every situation. So whether you're trying to do a randomizer nuzlocke, or just want a fresh start on a new playthrough, I'd highly recommend this. Never know what you'll find on these routes. Oh, okay. Fidget spinners. A big trend around the time this game came out, so it was only a matter of time until someone shoved one into the game. Bronzor, I'm sorry, but unfortunately is the victim here, and his model gets completely violated. Even his shiny version isn't safe. Looks ridiculous, but if you're a fidget spinner fan, here you go. You know me. If I can squeeze Mario into any game, I will. The creator added Mario and Luigi into the game and did way better than they should have. It replaces Porygon Z, and you'd think it wouldn't even look too good since Porygon is a floating Pokemon, but somehow they're grounded and even have walking animations. Their models are ripped from Mario 64, so that's why they look a little blocky, but still really neat. They even have a custom animation if you talk to them while they're following you. So the normal Porygon Z model is replaced with Luigi, even featuring a custom sprite in the PC. And then the shiny version becomes Mario. Love this one, it just looks so weird seeing Luigi or Mario in your party like this. Have you ever wondered what a cross between Pikachu and Umbreon would look like? Hopefully not, but there's still a neat little mod for it. Pikachu gets a little retexture resembling Umbreon's patterns. I found one in the wild to even give you a good view from all angles. Umbreon's probably my favorite evolution, so I love how this looks in general. The shiny form of Pikachu will now resemble the shiny form of Umbreon. I would like to see other Pokemon in this crossover style, and we may even have something similar coming up later. Sword and Shield had a lot of uh, controversy around it when the game first came out. People loved to complain on Twitter, and one of the first things they went after were the trees in the wild area. Sure, they could use a little touching up, I will admit, but come on. If these trees have really been bothering you that much, you can just remove them. How about that? Not sure exactly what the creator did, but pretty sure they just took the tree model and made it invisible. The collisions for them are still there in the wild area, so you may just randomly bonk on thin air while running around, but it's still a good change. The wild area really does look better and more clean with all of them out of the way. So, if these trees are still bothering you years later, now you can poof them out of existence. If you're on the other end of the extreme though and just really want those trees to look better, I got you. HD trees. The bark of the trees and I think the leaves get a rework here. I'll admit they do look better than the regular ones, but not a whole lot to say other than that. If this mod is something you drop everything for and hack your switch over, wow. No judgment here, I'm sure someone has before though. But this really isn't anything crazy, so let's continue on with some more interesting ones. 
Rainbow Ho-Ho. The legendary bird gets a little upgrade in the form of this. Most of his body is now covered white, and his feathers on his head, tail, and wings are a neat little rainbow pattern. This might be one of my favorite Pokemon skins this game has to offer, as he just looks so cool following you around. It'd be nice if the shiny version was now this model in black, as the current shiny is just the regular one. The Gen 3 legendaries Latios and Latias, known for their similar designs but differentiated by the red and blue coloring. Well, this mod takes their shiny forms and gives them a little bit of an upgrade, turning them into these neat black and white models. It keeps the same design on the Pokemon themselves, but it just changes the color. I'm a sucker for plain black and white patterns, so I'm a big fan of this one. I was thinking this would be kind of a difficult mod to add, as it'd require you to actually get a shiny Latios and Latias, but then I remembered you're already modding the game anyway, so you could very easily just add any Pokemon you want. So I don't know what I'm talking about. Told you we'd be doing more crossovers. This mod is pretty self-explanatory, but doesn't mean it ain't ridiculous. Dialga and Palkia's textures get swapped, so now they have each other's colorways. These two guys have been through a lot of changes this past year, so why not give them one more? It's a tough call on which one I actually like more, but I think I'm going to go with Palkia. The blue on him looks really nice. Moving on to a little section of mods that might make your next playthrough a little more enjoyable. First up is one right when you start your adventure. The game wants and forces you to put on this ugly old bag. It's clunky and takes up most of the space on your back. Luckily, much like the tree mod, someone took the default bag and made it invisible. The game still treats it as being on, as you can see by the cutscenes of our character grabbing thin air. Even if you didn't just start a new game, you could still use this mod at any point just to get no bag. If you're tired of the regular three starters and don't want to use the randomizer mod, this one might be for you. It replaces all the encounters in Pokemon on Route 1 with all the starters in the game. So now instead of the boring old Route 1 boys, you'll get Pokemon like Rowlet, Charmander, and Sobble. In case you forgot, not all the Pokemon are in Sword and Shield, so you won't be able to get starters from every generation. Just the first, seventh, and this gen. They're all possible to catch here, so if you wanted to play Sword and Shield with a different starter than normal, or all of them, now you can. If you've played a Pokemon game before, which if you're watching this kind of video for this long, you most likely have, but you're probably aware that in order to evolve certain Pokemon, you have to trade them to someone else. Sometimes there will be NPCs throughout the world that'll help you with this, but for others, you pretty much just have to have a friend. Luckily, now you don't need friends. Screw them. This mod modifies all the Pokemon that would normally only evolve through trade. So for example, Dusclops normally needs to be traded while holding a Reaper Cloth item. Now to evolve them, you just have to level them up while holding said Reaper Cloth. Shelmet also normally needs to be traded, but now they can just evolve at level 20. There's a whole list of them that the creator included that I'll put on screen now. But yeah, as you can see, it basically just offers an alternative to every trade evolution. So if you don't have friends who still play Sword and Shield, I got you covered. <sighs> raid partners. In Sword and Shield, you can participate in raids with up to four people. If you don't fill the spots, NPCs will be thrown in to help. Or so they say. If you've done these raids alone before, you'll know just how awful they can be sometimes. The Pokemon and even just the moves they decide to use are a headache to watch. I've lost so many raids solely due to NPC Farmer John trying to sleep powder a legendary while it's already asleep or something. Most of the time, they're just a waste of space and just kick me out of raids way faster than I should. So thankfully, someone went in and actually added a brain to these NPCs. So now they actually make better choices and just have plain better Pokemon. The first raid I did with this on, the trainers had Electivire, Machamp, and Titar. Very nice. Now they'll actually help you defeat the Dynamax Pokemon and don't just sacrifice theirs for no reason. You're not a Pokemon. Changing fictional monster character series entirely, we got Digimon. Instead of the regular Charmander line, we now get Agumon. The classic Digimon gets his chance in Sword and Shield, and I'm all about it. The evolutions get changed as well, so Charmeleon becomes Greymon and Charizard becomes Metal Greymon. They really couldn't come up with better names for these guys though. Anyway, they looked really cool and even included a custom PC icon. I loved the way Metal Greymon looks, pretty much fitting right in with the other Pokemon. This mod is something I've always wanted as a kid. Ever since I watched the Pokemon anime, I loved the Squirtle Squad, so now you can finally get them in the game. Just slaps a pair of sunglasses on Squirtle, but it makes all the difference. I would love to just have a squad of six of these guys just walking around. The glasses will come off if Squirtle evolves, so you'll have to keep them in the first stage if you want the shades. Marnie. A popular story character from this game with a big fan base is now a playable character. The creator changed specific hairstyles, sunglasses, and eyes, so now when you have those on, you'll look just like Marnie. You also now have the ability to wear any type of clothes you want with her. 
On top of the custom skin, the creator included more changes like a different walking animation and battle intro. So you really get the full immersive experience here. Honestly, I didn't even think custom playable characters would be possible with mods, which makes it all the much better. Ever wanted the 16th president of the United States in a Pokemon game? Why have you even thought that? But don't worry, there's still a mod for it. Leon, the champion, is now replaced with Honest Abe. I have no clue what this model actually is from, but it looks way too good to be done by the creator himself. No offense to them, it just looks like it came out of something else. But yes, now Hop's brother is literally Abraham Lincoln. Anytime you'd normally see Leon throughout the game or the story, you'll now be greeted to him. Looks ridiculous, but it's also great as it's just so random. Kind of fits Leon's attitude and dialogue better too. Pokemon Gun. <laughs> the long lost third edition of this game is finally here thanks to this modder. But before you get ahead of yourself, it's not a whole new game, it simply changes the opening title screen. Pretty much what the Pokemon company does anyway, but yeah, no other changes at all. Could be a fun addition to throw into some scuffed playthrough though. Well, uh, not really the mod I was going for here, but we're gonna make it work. This was supposed to replace the bike that you always ride around on with a car. But as you can see, there's not a bike or a car in sight. I guess the mod was never updated to the current version of the game, and I couldn't get it working on the base game either, so it's unknown which update of the game this actually works on. Instead, I just got an invisible bike. So, trying to make the most out of this mod, I'm just going to run with the whole invisible bike thing. At this point, it's just a second, very dumb, but faster running animation. You can watch your character's hands flap in the wind along with their knees. If you want a car in your game, or this invisible bike, try adding this mod and seeing what it gives you. Something out of the ordinary mods here, a custom mask. The molted edition of the wraparound sunglasses are now replaced with a nice Kofagrigus mask. I wish the creator labeled or just said what the mask actually replaced as it took me a good 10 minutes to even find the right mask, but yes, definitely worth it here. It is a bit creepy, but I still like it. I would love to see other Pokemon masks in this style, especially for my boy Bidoof, but this is all we got for now. If you were tired of looking at the regular model for Sonya, she completely changed her look here. Simply titled Goth Sonya, she gets a little makeover with new clothes. Doesn't really change too much, but it's just a nice simple character swap for the game. Combining this with the Lincoln one and playable Marnie, you could have a whole new experience in the Galar region. Last but not least, a slight modification to Garchomp. If you've ever came across a shiny Garchomp, you may have not even realized it as it's pretty bad. It's extremely similar to the base version and without the special shiny animation, I honestly wouldn't even be able to tell. Someone else realized this issue and created a better shiny version. It changes some of the colors around, making them more vibrant. I love how the yellow pops and is definitely a massive improvement. It's a shame such a strong Pokemon has such a weak shiny, so this mod is a must if you're able and willing. Well, there you have it. A whole lot of random and interesting mods in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Personally love this episode as I'm not really tempted to do a custom playthrough with as many mods as I can. For this episode, I mostly kept all the mods on at once, so I would just come across them in the wild without even noticing. Like this spot leaving your house in Postwick. I didn't even know there were Butterfree flying around here, but I sure do now. Shout out to all the creators of these mods, I'll be leaving links in the description to everything, so definitely check those out. We're already on our third episode here in the month of Codebreakers. If you missed the first two, we just covered Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and there's a big honkin' 30 minute video on Super Mario Odyssey mods. I should be back next Sunday on the 24th for our final episode. But just a heads up, I'm going to be traveling home for Easter and won't have any of my video equipment, so it might be a day or two late. I guess we'll see though, because current me talking right now has no clue how long that'll take to make. But with all that out of the way, I think it's time for me to skedaddle, so for now, I'm gonna get about of here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, see ya!